You might be surprised when you look at Steam and see an early access survival game of all things that sold 5 million copies in just over a month, and also sits as the third highest played game on Steam for about three weeks of that. But you'll only be surprised if you haven't yet played Valheim. For those of us that have played it, you'll understand exactly why that is. This video I'll be going over my general thoughts on Valheim as a project, I won't be going over specific mechanics like bosses, individual little things you do, but more how I feel about Valheim as a project. I played Valheim at this point for 55 hours, I've killed all the bosses that are currently in the game, made all the items that there are to make, at this point I'll be putting down the game until there's more content, but for the box price of 20 USD, this game was an absolute steal. Especially when you consider that according to the developers, the game is only currently 75% feature complete and 50% content complete. Meaning we have half the game left to go with some more features. And since this was written on the Steam page prior to the absolute mental overnight success, I'd be surprised if we didn't see even more than that added to the game eventually. You could absolutely take a stance and say that we've heard that before, right? We've seen the early access games promise to do things and in most circumstances they don't deliver. I'd say we should judge them on their merits and competence they've already displayed with delivering a game that has seen such success and trust that they can continue to do so. They obviously know what they're doing. Valheim proves that you don't need marketing, you don't need to pay content creators, you don't need AAA graphics and that the early access model is still working as intended. An indie game can absolutely make big money and there's a bright future for games that are both polished and ambitious, while not having their hands tied by the big money publishers and AAA greed. Of course, this experience, Valheim's success, is an outlier, but it's an outlier that I hope inspires more games of a similar design in the near future. I don't want this to turn into DayZ, I don't want a million Valheim clones, but at the same time, it just shows that people like the survival genre and they probably prefer the PvE aspect of it and working with their friends and, and the comeback of co-op. Valheim is a game that I previously said just works, and while I think that's a point we shouldn't really have to make, we sadly do in today's day and age. They haven't reinvented the wheel, they haven't crammed in content or features that are lofty but buggy or imbalanced, they've essentially taken survival mechanics that we're all too familiar with and made sure they just work well enough to create a gameplay loop that is fun and serviceable from start to finish. That isn't to say that the game doesn't do anything differently though, they absolutely put a twist on certain aspects and even in the early access stage have a level of polish that most survival games rarely reach, even after many years of failed promises and broken dreams. Everything seems reasonable within Valheim, the required PC specs to play, the price of the game currently being $20, the low barrier for entry for the prior knowledge of similar genre mechanics, and of course the reasonable amount of hardcore aspects such as death and loss. Valheim is one of the least punishing survival games I've ever played. You really only feel as if you've been punished by your own lack of planning, and even then, I haven't experienced a situation I couldn't recover from. Though there were a few times I travelled to another island on a boat, forgot to put down a portal, died, not had the materials for a new boat, and had to essentially call in help from a friend to bring over materials for a boat from his server, and go rescue my body together. That's a good time, I think, to segue into the fact that Valheim as one of the most seamless and fair co-op gameplay experiences I've ever seen, and is so well done for an early access game that it pains me to think of similar titles that have failed to deliver on this. In Valheim, you move your character between game worlds with ease, taking with you your equipment and inventory. You can literally hop between your own server, a dedicated server someone's put up, your friend's home world, or anything else in a matter of seconds. Setting up your own world as a server for others to join is incredibly easy and intuitive, no port forwarding, no messing around, this allows for anyone to play with anyone, anywhere, at any time. Being able to call in help from your friends in a game that obviously focuses on co-op is a perfect example of co-op done well. It feels like at this point, we've all heard it and any game can be chalked up to, it's better with friends, and I'll utter those words here. Valheim is better with friends for sure. It can be played solo, and I know many people who have done the game entirely solo, but I will say for me personally, the game was definitely much more fun when I had people to talk with and play with, so bear that in mind. Having said that though, you can start on your own and remember that you can literally join anyone at any time and just carry over your progress so you're never too early or too late to join a new group, find a new community to play with or anything in between. I have to praise the team for their choice in graphics. The game is always on the border of looking great or not looking so great. If you really stand and pay attention, the graphical style may seem dated and not the prettiest, but while actually playing the game, 
It's never further from my mind, and I actually think it looks great most of the time. The real MVP in Valheim, though, is the atmosphere, the lighting, the sound design. In terms of the atmosphere, the dark of the night, the thickness of the fog, the crashing of a rough sea, all not only play a factor in your immersion, but a factor on how you'll play the game and how risky your endeavours will become should you not be prepared. The lighting is actually incredible, and I fail to remember a game where I was that impressed with it, with this aspect. Lighting looks fantastic, boss effects, fire, the eerie green glow of the swamps and the glow of the moonlight. It's amazing, it really is. The soundtrack for Valheim is massively underrated, I think. There's soundtracks for each area, and they fit well. Beating drums for sailing, fast-paced urgent music for invasions of your base, scaling with intensity based on the level of the invasion. Calm, upbeat music in the least dangerous biome of the meadows. All these things added together make Valheim an actual treat to play and immerse yourself in. Content-wise, the game has more than enough content to satisfy the box price a couple times over at least. As we mentioned earlier, if we consider the competence the developers have shown and the massive influx of millions and millions of dollars, we can likely say that this game will scale exponentially with value for money. If you're into the game now and thought it was worth the money already, the prospect of twice as much of what we currently have as well as more features to go with it, is mind-blowing value. I like to think and compare Valheim to Terraria or Minecraft, games that I bought in early stages for a few dollars, that I've managed to play for thousands of hours across a decade. Whether or not Valheim continues to keep adding content post 1.0 release, and turns this into one of those persistently relevant and updated titles, is of course a question mark. I don't want to put that on them, but for me, it's a foundation that is extremely similar and entirely in their hands if, if they want to or not. Combat wise is my last point I'm going to make on the actual game systems. It's just good. It's almost like a Souls-like experience. Very basic attack, special attack, block, dodge and roll, as well as just being able to move out of the attacks by moving or sprinting. It's serviceable but basic. The learning curve isn't super steep and I do feel like it, be it can be gamed way too easy with a perfect timed parry. I do think that mechanic is cool to have but it seems to work on way too many things and there needs to probably be a little bit more of a penalty to it because it does make combat pretty trivial once you figure it out. Also, the combat needs to address swinging vertically. You pretty much can't hit things that are on a different elevation to you, so either above or below. Other than that, the arrow mechanics are great and really consistent. The melee weapons all actually feel different and have different purposes. Every monster in the game has strengths and weaknesses such as elemental, blunt, piercing, etc., which adds a level of depth that they can definitely expand upon down the line. It's serviceable as combat, it's a great foundation, and it works super well. It just does feel good, and they can just add on top of this without ever having to redesign the whole system. So it's great for now, and a great sign for the future, but it does need a little bit of work. So aside from the combat not swinging vertically and stuff like that, my only real complaints with the game are as follows. There are places where I think the grind dragged a little bit, iron being one of them where you need so much iron, and the method of getting it is finite within an area, as well as time consuming to mine, transport and smelt. I think iron being the most egregious of each material tier, this wouldn't have been a problem so much if I'd played on my own, but in a group of three or four players, a large swamp biome was totally mined out before we were even all fully iron geared. Not the biggest deal in the world. Next is performance. The game could do with some work. I've not had many issues with it myself, but I'm privileged to have a really, really good computer. And even on my system, I had specific instances of some FPS drops and a few freezers, but not enough to really put me off of the game in any way or really bring it up that much. With the game being procedurally generated, you do find some biomes that are just kind of a lie. Swamps that are too tiny, that have no iron in them or dungeons. Plains with almost no goblin camps. Black forests with no minerals or dungeons. Mountains with literally nothing on them. I've had a few inconsistencies with my game world, but not really that big of a deal when you consider how big the world is, so long as you don't mind travelling. The game would be much better, I think, with mounts, some form of travel on land. Water's fine, boats are great, but you will most likely find yourself running on foot fairly often over great distances, and mounts would definitely help out with this. This is a game that I can very easily see myself hitting that 1000 hour mark in years to come. A game like Minecraft, a game like Terraria. One of those where you can just boot it up in a few years time, and play from scratch on a new server with some friends, and experience all the changes, and I hope the game gets supported like those have. It isn't very often, I can't really levy much criticism at a game, but Valheim is one of those. It didn't pretend to be anything it wasn't, it didn't use shady marketing or PR to hype us up for months or years with fake trailers, it just came out and will go down as one of those sleeper hits that no one expected anything from, 
but just kind of took over. That's about it for this one, guys. I didn't really know what to call this video since it's not really a review, so I'm not actually sure what it will be titled. By the way, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button, drop a like on the video if you did. Leave me a comment down below if you would like to support me further. I do have a Patreon link in the description, as well, in the, as, well as an affiliate for NordVPN. You can use that, you get 70% off. I get a kickback of whatever you spend, which is a win-win, and you can try your best not to get spied on. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.